All right, guys, Cody here, back with another video. I have three questions uh, that were sent to me over the course of the last several uh, weeks or months, and uh, I'll go ahead and get to them. So I'll read the questions out first. So if you want to move on, if you you know the answer already, then 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 uh, you know go ahead and push past. So do DS agents uh, work? Do undercover work? Um, I feel like I, an I answered that one before, but I forget. So I'll answer it again. Uh, STO, um, SEO, uh, what do they do? It's a security engineering officer and what do they do and how they're associated with the domestic security. And then how are you selected for protection detail? So I think that would be of interest, particularly for, for new agents. Um, so do DS agents, uh, do undercover work? So it depends what you consider undercover work, right? Uh, as to the level of, uh, DEA, FBI undercover work, uh, no. Um, not that I know of, and I'm, I'm pretty sure no, but do we do some? Yeah. So I'll give a couple examples. Um, uh, when I was in, um, uh, Houston, we had a case with CFI criminal fraud investigations. That's our big, uh, unit that investigates multi-million dollar fraud cases. And they were following an, an, uh, an Indian national that was coming to the U S to do whatever he was doing. He was actually uh, suspected of murdering his wife uh, out in uh, the state of Goa in India, uh, but he was committing committed some, some visa fraud. So uh, he was flying to Houston. Two CFI agents came over to Houston, and we wanted to track him and watch follow him everywhere he went during uh, his trip. So CFI has a hell of a budget. Sent their two agents out, um, and we, we spent some time following this guy. So I ended up uh, um, going to the airport, uh, acting as if I was um, offboarding a plane um, and getting in the customs line with him. He flew from overseas. Um, and uh, uh, I was with uh, Audrey. Actually, if you read my book, Agents Unknown, Audrey was the, my uh, significant other that was with me. And uh, we stood in line. We followed him. We, you know, we walked behind him. We stood in line behind him. We kind of watched what he was doing, tried to listen. And well, the intent was to listen to any, any conversations, but we, we couldn't really do that. Um, and then we followed him all the way through and got in the cars and then did some surveillance. So uh, that was, you know, not really undercover work, but uh, I was, we, we were kind of um, playing that role. Um, another one is during my Operation Rex Safari, also in the book, uh, there was a time where I went in to uh, the car dealership. So one of the guys that I was investigating owned a car dealership, uh, and I went in and just asked some questions. Um, and it wasn't to him, it was to other people there, but it was mainly to get an eye, to get eyes on the dealership to see the layout in case we had to hit that place whenever we did uh, our, our arrest. So... Uh, I wore like a, 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 I wore a Saints jersey. I was in Houston, but you know, after Katrina, maybe you don't know, after Katrina, a lot of people from New Orleans moved to Houston. So I wore like a, a Saints jersey, had a backwards hat, I threw an earring, um, and uh, and it was just questioning about used cars and shit. So um, and that same Saints jersey, and I think probably same day, maybe another day after, I was walking up and down the neighborhood to kind of do some surveillance. So not really like real, not really undercover work. Um, like I said, like, like DEA and FBI and maybe some of the others, but you know, you can be creative, use your imagination and, 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 uh, uh, do a little bit of that work. And others, have, others may have done more, by the way, I don't know, but, uh, it's, I, I know it's not in DS is kind of like, uh, DNA to really do deep dive undercover work. Um, but that stuff does happen. And so those are some examples. Um, SEOs, uh, what do they do? Uh, so I, 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 the email, so this is a while back, but the email I got was something like there are different positions within DS, right? So diplomatic security, Bureau of Diplomatic Security and a diplomatic security service. Special agents is what I talk about. That's what I did. That's what I know. I know some of the others pretty well only because I was a Marine security guard. I dealt with some of them and as a DS agent, you deal with them as well. Um, so, you know, an SEO would be one of them. So those are tech, those are your tech guys. SEO is a, a security engineering officer. Um, and they, uh, work overseas. They have some domestic guys too, but they work overseas. They work out of us embassies and they are our, uh, right hand man, woman, uh, that deals, uh, uh, with the technical, uh, security technology. So everything from access control, um, uh, platforms to, uh, cameras, installing cameras, 
um, and and uh, and finding the technology we need, IDS alarms, intrusion detection systems. They deal with all of that. The SEOs are uh, kind of like uh, they're generally in charge of of a group of other. Uh, technical specialists called security technical specialists, STS, and maybe some other junior SEOs, but they work under diplomatic security. So they fall under the Bureau of Diplomatic Security. Uh, um, they are um, at, at post, they fall under the regional security office. So they fall right under the DS agent, but they have their own group of technical. So if you're at a really big post, you have an SEO and you have a bunch of STS and maybe some junior SEOs, but they still fall under the regional security officer. Right. And so the SEO might be, you know, particularly at a, at a new at a new installation or a new compound, you know, they could be heavily involved in the security engineering aspect. Like, hey, how are we, where are we going to put cameras? Now, the RSO has some say in that and in, in strategy. Right. Where do we want to put cameras? What do we want to cover? But how do we mount cameras? How do we run cable? Where do we run it to? Where do we put the nodes? Where do we, uh, you know, connect the the expanders? This is all stuff that you won't know much of as a DSA agent. I learned in a different path, a different career in life. But a lot of a lot of te- technology, uh, te- technological stuff, is what they deal with. And not every post has them. So, you know, I was in Ho Chi Minh City. We didn't have. We had them up in Hanoi. We had a SEO and then we had a STS. And so they would fly down, you know, kind of when we needed them. Um, but I had to do a lot of this stuff on my own. A lot of the, like, programming of people into the alarm system. Because when I got to Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh City was a lock and leave post. Meaning there were no marine security yards. There was a guard force that did external security. And at the end of the day, last person locked the post, uh, punched in the alarm, last American, punched in the alarm code, armed it, and then left. Um, and so... Some of the programming, for example, I would be responsible for on behalf of the SEO. So I'd get a new employee, a new American in. I would program them in the system so that they could arm the uh, the arm the uh, the building, the consulate, and then move on. But generally, uh, anything technical, you'll have someone to support you. They may not be on site, but they'll fly down. And if you don't have one in country, say you're in a really small country in Africa, right? Um, and then. Uh, You'll have uh, maybe some SEOs or STS that are at a bigger post and they'll support a region. And so they will, uh, you know, come out when you need to help support you in your security technology needs. So security engineer, engineering officers and security technical specialists are part of the DS team. They're tech guys that deal with everything from cameras to access control. So card readers, access control platform that's connected to that. If you don't know much about this, feel free to ask and we'll talk about it. Um, uh, intrusion detection systems um, and other uh, security technology that's out there. That's what they deal with. Okay, so how are you selected for protection detail? And and um, so I'll make this into two parts. How are you selected? And then uh, how do you get a particular position in the detail? And really there's no uh, much, not much rhyme or reason with it. Uh, but so how are you selected? So if you're in a field office, uh, it's oftentimes just on a rotation, right? People are, whether you're single or married or whatever, you're, you're generally, you're up, you're rotating. Now, if you want to volunteer and say, yo, I'll go, boom, they'll send you, right? You can go to any, almost any protection detail you want. Um, if you, if you have an office of like, you know, I've done enough, then yeah, there'll be a rotation. Uh, the, uh, you know, say secretary's detail or uh, DP, dignitary protection, which covers everything else but secretary's detail. So all the different dignitaries that come to the U.S., um, they'll send out a message to Houston and say, yeah, Houston, we need three agents. Uh, WIFO, we need 12 agents. And they, they I think they base it kind of on percentage, maybe not. I don't know if there's not that much math behind it. Um, but, but, uh, they basically say, we, here's our needs field office. And I need you to fill those. And most of the time the field offices need to comply and fill every gap that they need. So they'll go around, you know, say just three unit soups. Uh, unit supervisors uh, and the SAC or ASAC will say, hey, three unit supervisors, give me one person from each unit. And then depending on when you went last or if you want to go or if you're available, you might be traveling for something else. You might be on a big crim case. You might have a, you know, you might have uh, have to re- go to the U.S. attorney's office and and, and uh, have something big you got to deal with. You might have family issues um, that you're dealing with, right? Maybe the birth of a child is coming up. So they'll, uh, you're, you're, it'll kick down to your unit soup and then they will choose someone from the unit. And then you'll go. So when you get there, how do you get a position? Um, 
you know, sometimes, particularly when you're always brand new, they just fill the gap. Just boom, fill the gap. Um, when you get there, uh, sometimes the shift leader will meet and you, and you'll be like, oh, okay, this guy's good to go. And I need some, I need a guy that's a strong driver. I need a guy with a good personality to do this or that. And they might flip it around. Um, other than that, if you've been around a while, once you do a few of them, uh, and, and they know you and you get to be known, then you're going to get the best spots, right? You're going to get some of the cooler spots. So I worked command post like once or twice in, in, I can't tell you how many protection details I did. Tons. Um, and uh, and command post is fine, CP. Um, but uh, after I proved myself a couple times, um, my name got around just like everybody's. I wasn't anyone special. It was, DS is small. Um, and I got to do some good things. After I was in Iraq and I and I went and support secretary's detail in different places, um, the agent in charge or the, uh, the ASAC, assistant special agent in charge of secretary's detail, uh, a guy named John always wanted me as driver. He knew I could drive. He knew I could get out of there. He knew I was trained. He trusted me. And so the driver is a critical position, right? Um, you, you get attacked when you're in, in, in Nigeria. Uh, you want to be able to get off the X and, and make those moves. And so I went from being an agent in charge of a protection detail in Iraq uh, to being a driver for the U.S. Secretary of State because uh, the agent in charge trusted me and knew that he wouldn't need to tell me if I needed to get off the X, I could execute and make you know, make the right decision and get where you need to go. So, uh, so a lot of it's based on reputation. A lot of it is based on, uh, obviously performance. Um, and you can start on a, at a particular position and switch out. That happens on occasion, not often, but it happens on occasion. Um, it's really up to the shift leader and the agent in charge. And if you do good work and you have those interpersonal skills and people like you, let's face it, you could, you could, you could not care if people like you. That's fine and you act that way, then you'll get what you get. But, and you don't have to, I didn't go around like, I hope everyone likes me. Just be, just be a good dude. Be a good girl, good person. Uh, and you'll end up uh, doing fine and getting selected for hopefully uh, a good position. What are the good positions? Now I'm just taking it far. I don't want to ask this, but, uh, well, I mean, as you get more senior shift leader positions is, is, is like the shit. It's fun. Uh, TC, uh, not TC, T tactical commander is what we call it in, in high threat, but, um, lead right front, uh, lead right front, uh, is, uh, our police lead is what they call like three different names, but basically leading the motorcade through the city. So you sit in the back of a police car and you like sit sideways and shit and you call out your next turn and everything. You do all the routes before you get to work with MIPD. That's pretty cool. That's a fun position. Um, advancing is great. I love advancing. I like talking to people. I like meeting people. So you get to go to all these different sites. You shake some hands, you get to know people. Um, and you're a specialist for that particular venue. Um, and you have a ton of autonomy, right? So you'll have a car where you'll leapfrog from different sites and you don't have to worry about the detail. Now, some people like the flash of the detail, right? You're in the motorcade, you got, you know, fucking six, seven cars. If you include staff vehicles or whatever, there's lights and sirens, potentially people like, wow, look at this, taking pictures, depending on where you are. Um, and that's pretty cool. Some people like that. I enjoyed it on occasion. I enjoyed a little bit of everything, um, but I think advancing is pretty fun. Um, and then, uh, oh, oh, uh, uh, not so. I was talking earlier about driver for the secretary. Say I was limo driver, um, but uh, a fullback drive. Uh, shit, it's the uh, uh, the uh, follow car driver is 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 a lot of fun because that's the one that's like you'll see when you get into training, but. The agents in the back and the shift leaders, so it's follow car driver, shift leader, to uh, you know, uh, left rear, right rear, um, and um, the follow car is throwing blocks. So if you if if I don't want to get too much detail, but you, you you throw blocks. So if you're coming in an intersection and this limo is passing, the follow vehicle will shoot up to block it in case someone runs that intersection, right? And that's real. That's your real threat out there, is right? Distracted driving and. And drunk drivers, right? Not not a freaking uh, terrorist attack in the middle of Dunloring, Virginia, or where we, or, you know, in the middle of the U.S. or something. Maybe, but usually not. Um, so, uh, the follow car driver, you just you drive. It's wild, man. So that's fun. There's a lot of fun ones on the detail. What you really don't want to be is command post. Uh, you know, you don't want to be CP. Um, but that's you know, some people like it. They get to read their books and hang out and do whatever. So, anyway, I take that one a little far, but. Uh, all right. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, what do we got going on? We got a lot, lot going on these days. Um, so let me talk about the things I, I still do. So 
Off the X podcast. You can catch that anywhere you get your podcasts. Uh, I talk to DS Special Agents and others who support the DS mission. It's been primarily DS Special Agents lately. I've had people ask to come on. I'm not going to say no, particularly when it's an active agent because those are hard to get. Uh, so I've just been rolling with it. So DS Special Agents coming on. I'm actually recording again tomorrow. So I'm doing one per month now, at least one per month. So I'm recording again tomorrow with an active special agent that will probably be released within the next week or so. Um, what else? Facebook group, becoming a DSS agent. If this is the first video you see, uh, and you want to become a DSS agent or even a, just a federal law enforcement agent, feel free to join the group, fill out the questions. I didn't know who you are. I hope you have a profile because I kind of need to check to make sure you're not, you know, uh, some prince in Nigeria trying to steal our information. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, I'll let you in the group and a ton of Intel. So that group has Active former DS agents, whether retired or just, or just veteran DS agents, active DS agents from all levels, you name it. Got those that just got into uh, uh, training, those that just graduated from training, um, those that have been in for 25 years. It's a little bit of everything. It's an awesome group, and you can ask questions, and um, and people respond. I have a couple group, group experts that respond, uh, and that's pretty cool. So, you know, go check it out. Um, what else? Uh, my Instagram page off the X underscore Inc. I've been doing a lot of personal safety, safety stuff lately. Um, uh, it, it just saw, so I look at doing three things and I'm just trying to add value where I can. One DS agent stuff, uh, uh, uh high threat protection, DS agent stuff. Um, that's, yes, that's two, um, uh, personal safety and then global security matters and how it might affect, you know, uh, us or, or like a DS agent, for example. So I, you know, I don't. I try not to overthink it. I just put what's out there. I see a good video. Uh, I, I write about it and, and um, you know put some stuff out there. And hopefully, the whole point is to add value. So I do that. Um, the newest and biggest thing is the Patreon account. So the Patreon account um, is going. I have a, I have some members already. Um, I have a uh, so the reason I started this is people will write to me on these videos and say, hey, how can I give back? Uh, what can I do? You know, and they go and they buy a sticker pack or they go and they buy and they got to pay, you know, whatever shipping for a sticker pack or you buy a hat and shirt. I love that. That's awesome. That's great. It's promoting the brand. Uh, that's good. Um, but not everybody wants that. Some people, I had a guy buy a shirt for double, a, a hat for double the amount the other day. It was a prototype hat too. And I was going to give it to him for a lot less, but he, he wanted to pay more to get back. So I uh, started the Patreon account. So you can't, so, but, but you're not just going to give. So you'll get something out of it. So there's five dollars, you can get five dollars a month. You can stop anytime. So five dollars and then and then if you don't like what you see, then you cut it out. And even if you don't like it, I'll probably give you I'll give you five dollars back if you don't really like it. But with that you get a fifteen percent discount off the website. You get early access to the off the X podcast. I'm doing story times now. So I'm doing uh, I have some pretty good stories about personnel recovery and her bill, about POW MIA sites that I, that I've I did protection for. Um I have as a there's a a good one with ORA with CIA uh that, that I, I dealt with, um, uh, setting up a medevac. It's all kind of stuff that I'm doing story time with. Um, and then I'll do an article at least once a month, maybe more. And it's kind of a thought-provoking article is the intent to help you potentially prepare to become a DS agent or, or a security professional. Uh, or just, you know, think about the world in general just because when you come into this field, uh, it's, it's, you need to kind of be well-rounded on, on your understanding of international relations. Um, and that's, and that's five bucks for five bucks. You get all that. And then there's other levels. You can go all the way to the top level in which, uh, I will literally take one-on-one, -on -one, uh, for first off, the other levels have, uh, we're going to be doing happy hours with like-minded individuals. We'll be doing some guest speakers from, you name it, DS agents, FBI, DEA, uh, it'll be virtual. Most of it will be virtual. Uh, every once in a while in San Diego, I might do something. So we'll have the happy hours. We have the virtual events. Um, uh, you know, uh, but the highest one you can get, you get a, I, I do a resume review with you. I'll do a, uh, a, a law enforcement, federal law enforcement prep, uh, particularly if you're DS agents, I help prep. And that's, every, that's everything from how to, how to show up, how to dress, how to act, what to say, you know, to, to, to appear professional. But most importantly, how to convey your experience. If you listen to the, if you're interested in being a DS agent, and you listen to Kayla Bokelman. She was a recruiter. Uh, and she says, you know, one thing is people don't understand really how to convey their experience. And that's one thing I do is I'll sit down with these guys and girls. 
we'll, we'll, we'll I'll have scenarios. We'll go over scenarios and how would you respond to these security situations? And I'll help you out through that because a lot of people aren't security. And they just want to know how to think critically and not say something that's really off the wall that might throw you you off in your interview, but also how to convey your experience, right? So you might have a bunch of experience or a little experience, but how can you have that little experience and take it to, 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 to be more robust and to present yourself in a particular way at, at the BEX panel? And that's the problem people are having not getting past the BEX. And if you'll hear Kayla on this on that podcast say, you know, uh, and we have all these guys with this great, great experience and they, they just can't articulate themselves and they can't convey it. And one is practice, learning how to convey it, speaking in person to someone else with a little bit of pressure. Um, and that's what I do. I'll sit there and I'll do that. So go to the Patreon page. If, the, if you're interested in being a special agent or just supporting the cause, you can give $5. Um, uh, you can give uh, like 15, 25, depending It's different levels there. And, and I'll work with you to, to do, uh, to, to get you there. And what's there, what's listed is not everything you're going to get. You're going to get more. I'm telling you right now, I had people already ping me. I'm hitting them up left and right. Like, let's get this going. Let's do this. My, my, my purpose is to, to get you to pass this, to get you where you want to be. Um, yeah, there's money involved. Again, it's more like it's a membership um, and you can cancel any time, but I do have costs. So I've been doing this for two years now. I've racked up some costs. I had a $350 domain bill the other day. Um, I have uh, bills for Zoom. I have a bill for podcast production. I have, you name it, those things come up. They add up. That's why I was selling the clothes. It's a lot of work. So this is more of a, uh, I give you a little more and you can contribute whichever, whatever you feel is necessary. And so it's, um, patreon.com off the X underscore Inc. Um, you can just go to Patreon and, and Google it and, uh, and, and search it and, and I'll pop up. Um, but you know, if you don't like it again, I'll give you money back, but I'm confident and I have helped people get through and it's not cause I know the answers It's because I know what in any industry, in any law enforcement entity, what they're looking for. I've helped guys become DEA agents, helped guys become Secret Service agents, and, and it's really just basic shit on how to convey, how to learn to talk and communicate, and how to dress. People are like going with dirty freaking fingernails and blood on their neck, and you, know, you can't do that, man. There's a certain way, and dressing with freaking skinny ties and skinny skinny pants, you can't do that. Like This, this is a certain community that you need to dress and act like and i can help get you there so um that's my thoughts that's what i can do to help you uh with the patreon account um and i think the stories are pretty pretty fun but you know i'm biased to it um what else uh let me just show you real quick if you hung on with me this long i have uh apparel i have um i don't have any hats at the moment they're in route but i do have this the the most popular design on hoodies and on shirts now, and that is the high threat protection design. And whether you did high threat protection or not, you can still support the cause, uh, but it's getting you off the X. High threat protection in the front is OTX, off the X. And I have hats. It's on the website, CodyParallon.com. Uh, check it out. Probably should have wore an off the X shirt for this, uh, but, you know, whatever. We'll get there. So... Hit me up, info at CodyParallon.com if you got questions and uh, join Patreon for a little bit. Support a little bit if you can. The more I get out of it, the more I get, the more I give. Um, and by that, I mean get, you know, uh, to help support uh, all the different platforms and everything we're doing here. So we're growing. It's growing. It's growing. I say we. It's it's. Uh, I have a good group of folks that follow and support, and I'm thankful for all of you. Thankful for support. And uh, let me know how I can help. All right. Thanks, y'all. Out.